Okay. Okay, class. We have Mr. Fagbeg, Mr. Faraway. Mr. Femi Faraway. Mr. Mr. Femi Faraway is an experienced broadcast journalist with a demonstrated history of working in the media industry. He's skilled in media production, broadcast television, and radio production. He is a strong media and communication professional with a postgraduate diploma in mass communication from the University of Lagos. He previously worked with the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria as a presenter. He, he also worked at the BBC as a broadcast journalist. Presently, he works with the Megalectrics Limited, operators of Classic FM, Beat FM, and Ninja FM. Once again, we want to say welcome, Mr. Femi. And the floor is yours. Right, thank you are ready for the lecture. Okay. Thank you very much, Ebenezer, as well. Thank you, every, uh, thank you everyone who's out there. Um, I'm guessing that from the participants, what, 13 people? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's great to meet all of you. My name is Femi, like you said, Parawe, from Lagos State. You've gone through my profile, so there's really no need to touch on all those things. What I'll just try to do is guide us into the conversation. Uh, so today I'm speaking on two topics, but one delving into the other, backgrounding and human interest angle. Now, before I get into that, I just want to explain, just to give you some form of knowledge. I don't know if you guys are very conversant with some of the tools of communication. So I'm going to have to pick my words very carefully because communication is a very big thing. Now, in time past, we talk about mass communication, but with the rise of digital communication, we always have to create room to add that into our conversation. That's why I'm going to be very careful by saying, if you understand the basic tools of communication, five W's and H4, broadcasts or journalism, five W's and H, is what will help us understand what we're trying to do today, what we're talking about today. Uh, there's the who, what, when, where, and why. There's also how as well, that's five W's and H. Are you guys very conversant with those items? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we are. Oh, I'm just going to talk. You guys are not going to respond. Wow, wonderful. I thought we were going to have back and forth conversations. Uh, but, but that's fine. So um, I can continue anyway. So the five W's and H, those are the things that guide you in practically everything you do. Now, like you mentioned in my, when you were rolling through what I've done, I've worked for Radio Nigeria. And this was one of the things they taught us when we started. You need to understand that once you know the five W's and H, you can fit into any system, right? You just need to have knowledge of what you are doing. That five W's and H will guide you in preparing a new story, a PR bulletin, a publicist response, um, digital community, anything you need. Once you understand the five W's and H, because in every story, once you look, maybe because you haven't really paid attention, maybe your previous facilitators must have mentioned it, but in every story you have who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? When you talk about all those in going forward, because this is leading us to what we're going to talk about today. As I worked in Radio Nigeria back then, we practice everything. So today you could be a crime reporter, tomorrow you are a judiciary reporter, the next day you are in aviation sector, another day you're supposed to handle sports, tomorrow you're handling politics. As long as you know these tools, you can fit into anywhere. Now. The only reason why you will need to be for, because like they say, broadcasters, journalists, or communicators are supposed to be the most intelligent people in the world. Even if you're talking about a conversation you have researched, or someone asks you a question, and they always say, if you're not sure, leave out. Or if you're not sure, buy some time, do a quick research, then return. That's where backgrounding comes in, and that's what I want to talk about today. Backgrounding, practically, for those of you who are very conversant with the world as well, is a part of communication where you do a lot of research, you add skeleton, you put flesh to a skeletal story. So when you read articles from sites, say the BBC, or somebody puts out a post that um, XYZ wants to run for a political office. Now it just comes out straight that Ebenezer wants to run for an office. Ebenezer is a this, Ebenezer is a this, he believes he can change Nigeria. The question we always ask is who is Ebenezer? What has Ebenezer done? That's where communicators come in. Your job is to dig in, pick out 
all his antecedents, bring out all those information to Blair. Oh, what has Ebenezer done in time past? Uh, recently, Peter will be put out a statement saying, when we pick candidates for elections next year, for presidential elections or whatever, we should ask what have they done in the last 25 years? That's what backgrounding is. So you as a communicator, you have to dig in, look for what the person has done. Because when you write a story, the story has to be backed with, oh, in 1990, Ebenezer was the local government LCDA representative. In 1995, Ebenezer was this. They're bringing it. Ebenezer had an EFCC case in this period. You must do it. You can't put every information in the story or every information in your write-up because it depends on what you're writing for. Some of you will end up in PR, working for media agencies. Some will work for companies writing statements. Some will work for um, digital or artists. It could be anything because now the media is so big that you can fall and you don't have to necessarily be a news writer or a news editor or a presenter because yes, I know a few people also want to become presenters. But backgrounding practically talks about you going into those stories, the, the, back, the, the back stories, stories that are not there. Because when we talk about writing new stories, it's just basically the inverted pyramid, put what is important, leave out whatever is not necessary. So even if you're writing for print, when you see print stories, the first three paragraphs are most likely the most important stories. For those of you who are very conversant with the stories from the BBC, the BBC in the first paragraph tells you everything. The, you most likely find like maybe three or four of the five Ws and HK. Then the how is what you will now see in paragraph four, paragraph five, paragraph six, as the case may be. But backgrounding is about going deeper. Many times backgrounding stories are stories that we find as feature stories because the feature story can give you insights into things that you probably did not even know about. You probably had not even, it's not a part of the news but it's an information that will help you understand the news better. That's practically what backgrounding is all about. And that's why it's an important part of broadcasting at this time. So let me make an example as well, to, just to help you understand. Um, in my current profession and my current place of work, I also contribute as well as a sports analyst, right? So when we go on air and we're having a conversation about an issue, Obviously, you can see Manchester United beat Arsenal two goals to new. Yes, that's the result. But how did Manchester United beat Arsenal? A game that we all thought Arsenal was going to win. That's when you now start breaking it down. Or a player moves somewhere. You're not explaining, oh, if this player goes to this club, this is the effect. This is what will happen. These are the repercussions. This is the ripple effect. That's basically what backgrounding is all about. And like I said, it happens in every... every um, every part of communication. So if I want to talk about Whiskey, for example, or oh, Whiskey is planning to drop an album, or oh, this will be Whiskey's seventh album. Now, if I'm going to write a feature story on off head page, and I'm reviewing Whiskey's expected album launch, I'll talk about Whiskey's previous albums. Or oh, in 19, uh, in 2000, and this, he dropped this album when he was under EME. At this point, he went under to Sony, he dropped this album, and then I'll try to review the albums based on what they have done. This one was critically successful. This one wasn't so successful. It shows you that I have done my research as the writer or the presenter of that story. And that's what makes mass communicators very unique in this job. Now, I also understand as well that because it sounds like you read a story and you're like, ah, man, everything just falls into place. Everything is where it should be. You're asking yourself, how does the person do it? You have to be a voracious reader. And I'm sure many facilitators must have told you guys this, that if you're going to work as a communicator in whatever field, you need to know how to read. You need to read a lot. It's something that helps you in whatever you want to do going forward. Now, I started off reading a lot of books when I was very young. I read my sister's novels. So for those of you who read James Hadley Chase, I read a couple of silhouettes. I also did Daniel Steele while I was starting off because I really did not know what my angle was. But as I grew older, I realized that I love Michael Christian, the author of Jurassic Park. I read C.J. Sheldon. I read James Patterson. And as I kept reading these authors, it helped my vocabulary. Now, vocabulary also helps because if you're talking or writing, you can't bore people to death. So because you have so much information, it doesn't mean you should just throw everything at the person. You need to, in a creative, literary way, put these ideas to carry the reader or the listener as it goes. 
on radio, on TV, or when you follow international broadcast media, you'll find out that they will tell you when they give you a story, they will do future stories that, oh, this happened here, this happened. If you read the World War stories, or oh, this was what caused the World War, because yes, there was a World War, what caused it? That's where background is that, oh, Germany had this problem that led to World War I. As a World War, after World War I, there were packed League of Nations, they put this down, they put that, they put that. But going into World War II, I think that was 1937, if I'm correct, or 35, not very sure, 1937 or thereabouts. There were issues in Germany, which was why the Führer, Hitler, rose and said, Germany is taking over, we're going to war. You need to understand all this. And that's what makes you stand out as a communicator when you're talking to the listener out there or you're writing to somebody who's reading your content. You are practically supposed to be the knowledgeable person. They always say this in broadcasting that know a little of everything, not something, not, not everything of something. So I must know A, B, C, D to Z. I don't need to know A completely because if I know A, I don't know anything about B. So that's what you need to do. You need to be a good reader. You need to understand the rudiments of broadcasting, of journalism. Because in journalism, you can't write like you're writing a novel. A novel builds anticipation. It starts off by saying, oh, a man walks into a dark room. The curtains are down. The bed is there. He tiredly sweating, sits on the room, puts on the air conditioner, puts on the fan. No, in journalism, you have to give us a minute because people's interest span doesn't stay so long. So the minute you drop that information, you have to keep me reading or keep me listening. The minute you bore me, I switch off. So it's very important that you understand background because it will be a segment in your careers that you'll have to explore when you either do a TV show, a radio show, or you're going to write for print or even write as a publicist. You need to find a way to keep people who read your pamphlets glued. And that brings us to the human interest angle. Now for this human interest angle, it's a very interesting part to mention. I say this because um, there's also backgrounding, and I'll get to that. But first, what is human interest angle stories? Uh, for all of us who have our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, we all have interests. There's something you follow, or there are pages you follow, there are stories you see. I follow Instablog, for example, and there are certain stories I see on Instablog, and I just jump on it. I'm, I'm like, oh, this is my interest. This is what I want to hear. This is what I want to see. They say the media is a the media sells propaganda. The media sells agenda setting. That theories of communication, agenda setting. So you go online, you see agendas. What do we like generally as a people anywhere in the world? We love human angle or human interest stories. I don't know if you guys are very conversant with television programs. I'm going to try to use a lot of examples so you follow. Um, if you follow channels television, for example. On channels television, their sunrise show, that's sunrise breakfast show, is hardcore stories. Like it's the news. It's the main news, hardcore. And they put guys there who analyze the news. And that's what you get. If you're somebody who likes to hear man beats wife, you will never see it on channels television in the morning, right? But if you're somebody who likes, like, who likes human interest story, oh, dog bites man or a man got his finger bitten by a lion. There's a story trending on social media recently, right? You almost likely would tilt to a TVC, for example. TVC does a lot of human angle stories. Now, their panelists are women, one. So their audience are women who maybe are not going to work in the morning, home executives, or women who work from home, or men who have that interest of, in quote, what we used to call it in magazine is soft sell stories, but human, interest angles that's practically what it is now those sort of stories are the stories that have risen recently and i'm bringing digital media into this because there are lots of it now the insta blog i mentioned bella ninja linda kj all the stories you find a lot of it oh bob Brisky and toto dk are fighting to be honest it really isn't newsworthy there's nothing they're calling them that's their problem so they can fight all they want to fight i'm not really interested but because a lot of people are interested in celebrities what is the problem? What caused their fight? What have they done in time past? We've heard the story around the Dubai issue. To be honest, I read it. I'm like, okay, you guys had this experience in Dubai. Now I've heard the other one that you're owing money. There's a video out. All these things are part of the reasons why we say human interest stories is a growing space. 
in communication. It's almost everywhere. Some of you end up becoming social media managers, right? So you're supposed to handle a page, a page for a company, a page for a blog, a page for a vlog, anything. You have to put out content. Okay, so what is trending? You always check what is trending because if you check our trending topics, most times on Twitter, on Instagram, it's human interest stories that are trending or dog bites man. There's a story I mentioned earlier about the lion uh, that bit a man's finger. It practically went everywhere because everybody kept checking it. That how we all know a lion is a dangerous animal, right? And we know you're not supposed to put your finger in. Well, if you foolishly do that, which is what I thought the person did, and you get your fingers beaten off, I want to see the video. I actually went as far as following their Telegram page just to watch that video. There's a growing interest. And as a writer, as a communicator, how you keep your audience glued to that sort of story is the most important thing. Right? There are many ways you can write. There are many writing styles. I can sit here and tell you a thousand and one writing styles, but I always advise that as a presenter, as a writer, right? I, I put everything into it. So that you're writing on social media, print, or, or any platform, or you're a presenter, internet radio, internet TV, traditional media, whichever one you're doing, you have to know how to keep people glued all through your stories. You can never lose them. Some of you have favorite broadcasters. Uh, some of you have favorite writers. While I was growing up, I used to read a lot of articles from Ruben Abati when he was at The Guardian. Um, it was so good that I had a book in school that he was a guest, I think he, he was a guest writer. So he had a chapter he wrote on. That style of writing, I adopted it because it was so conversational. Two people were having a conversation and talked about the Sharia law. And they put all the information, right? The W's, but it wasn't in chronological order. But they talked about the basic happenings of the Sharia law, explaining it using backgrounding, which is what brings us back to what I said at the beginning. In writing, as much as you have all those information, if you don't know how to put it down in a book or in presentation, because on television or radio, you don't have one hour to talk about something. You're told that, oh, you have five minutes, you have three minutes. It doesn't matter what your interest is. It's just how you paint that picture of that interest. That's what keeps people glued. Many of you here already know who Richard Quest is. Right? Quest is a very popular broadcaster. We've all seen him on CNN. He's their business presenter. But the question you ask you, and I ask all of you listening is, how many of you actually watch business reports other than Richard Quest, if you have seen it? How many of you follow it on the BBC? How many of you follow it on channels? How many of you follow it on NTA? How many of you who listen to Radio Nigeria and listen to business report? Because you're like, yeah. Because all they give you is the cold, hard facts. But what Quest does is he's still giving you the same business information, or he's putting background into it that, okay, we're talking about the GDP of Greece after they had that crash a few years ago to build their, they started talking about tourism, Santorini. They built it, tourism, put out adverts everywhere, talked about how it's like heaven on earth. That has increased. They went as far as showing their ancient areas, Athens, this place, that place. We want you to come and read through some of the books we've got. Aristotle, Socrates, all those names. It's how they built the economy to regain balance. Because as much as business is boring, Richard Quest found a way to excite you, entertain you, whilst still giving you background into some of the things they have done. And that's why I say that as much as we think human angle stories are dog bites man, Man slap woman, husband fights wife. No, it's in almost every sphere of communication. That's why we need to really look at these things, understand them. Communication or stories, how you present stories is about your understanding. No one has a no one has the best way. We always say pick your role models, look through the media, local and international, look for people who inspire, look for people who their style you like, either in presentation in writing. Now, don't pick somebody who doesn't work for you. So while I was growing up, I used to love listening to Femi Shawolo and uh, this JAJ. Don't know if you guys are conversant with him. He works for Rhythm. Now, I grew up listening to both of them, but I realized that I never had Shawolo's voice. I didn't, I, I didn't stand. So I can learn his style, but I cannot present like him. He's the guy who voices glow adverts, if you listen to any glow adverts. But I love JAJ because I realized that our voice is sort of similar. It's a lot softer more soothing to the air. And I sort of built 
my own broadcasting style around what is done. He's a music buff. I love music, but not to become a music presenter. No, not to become a radio presenter who does, does DCA jobs. That's the duty continuity announcer. It's what it used to be called back in the day. But I will not lie to you. I think that no matter what your angle of broadcasting is or communication as a whole, you need to understand that for every story, there's a way to flip it. You can use backgrounding to flip a story. And once you flip the story, you can bring an agenda. That's what they say, the media sells propaganda. The media is the strongest tool. Yes, people say the medicine or the medical profession, engineering, politics, but no. The media can sell an agenda to you that you will believe it. You will swallow it hook, line, and sink, and that's what you will follow. Because whoever is telling you the story, the narrator, the presenter, or the writer, is giving you facts. They may not necessarily be truth, but they are facts. And those facts are the facts that they present in a way that as you listen or you read them, you continue to follow it to the end and you believe it. So I tell you a story about, I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember how President Goodlord Jonathan, many years ago, the campaign plan, when they said, oh, I had no shoes and I'm one of you. We all love that sort of story. We love someone who's one of our own, somebody who's struggled, who's seen the strife of life, somebody who's gone through the streets and has finally made it. There's a lot of love, like, okay, this is the sort of person we want to rule us. We don't want a privileged person. We want somebody who understands our pain. That's the human angle story. Even though it's politics, it's a human angle story because it came out with, I had no shoes. And we all bought into the story. It was a great campaign plan. Remember, it wasn't the media who started it. It was his publicity team, his campaign team. That's where APR also comes in. And that's why I said at the beginning that in communication, every department is tied. You only just hear a presenter says, good morning, welcome to this. Or hello, this is this. Or you hear somebody says, this is the news at 12. But a publicist for a politician, for a celebrity, a social media manager, they make the news. They create an agenda. They sell it. The media just picks on it, especially if you are favored or you have grace on your side. And like I said, President Jonathan had grace on his side. Nigerians loved the idea. They loved his background. They bounced on it. And he got elected as president because he sold. I'm not saying he didn't do other jobs in terms of what he could do. He had his manifesto. Oh, I promise to change the economy. But we obviously fell in love with that. I, well, no, I had no shoes. So those are some of the things you need to understand when you're doing communication. I don't know how long I've got, so Ebenezer, please let me know if my time is almost up. But I just want to see. No, sir, go ahead, sir, go ahead. I just want to say as well that you need to know these things. You need to understand these things. Yes, people will tell you in every angle, because I can sit down and think about even in politics. I remember when President Muhammad Buhari was going to get elected and people dug into his past. One of the things they're looking at was, but what happened to your former wife? Remember, I was talking politics. What has, what has that got to do with anything? But a lot of Nigerians were interested. Oh, what happened to his former wife? As a Muslim, how many wives does he have? Under the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, one, there's nothing wrong if he comes out and says, I've got one wife, right? However, Nigerians wanted to know, oh, you're a Muslim. Islam says you can marry more than four wives or more than three wives. You can marry as much as four wives. We want to know about that. And when you see those headlines, Nigerians flip through it, or he did not graduate, he did not have WAEC. Nigerians flip through it. Now we're also forgetting that, like I said, agenda. Because somebody is selling an agenda to you, you are forgetting that if you look through his history as well, he went to the uh, Nigerian Defense Academy. That means he went through military practice. That's particularly like being in the civil service. It means the exposure he got while going through the NDA has already gathered enough exposure that he didn't need some of the things he needed anymore to get to that level. Because once you have that sort of exposure, you are no longer a rookie. You are no longer a beginner. You've already got to, in the military, you are taught basic mathematics, English. That's the Nigerian Defense Academy. Mathematics, English, and all the other courses. You graduate, you have your personal parade. So it means that you are educated. We're just used to what we know. What we don't know, we're confused. So those are some of the things that comes into mind. As a communicator, what do you do? That's where research comes in. And a lot of people complain about researching because we feel it's hard. I just want to talk about Omale. I just love Omale. I love his song. But Omale had the beginning. It's some of the things that make a story good. 
What was Omale's beginning? Where did he start from? Where was he singing? Whiskey had the song, we'll do a leg back. And we all said, oh, that was a great song. But in that song, he spoke about himself. If I was a journalist and I was going to write about Whiskey, that would be my first song to go and listen to. To go and hear some of the things he mentioned. Oh, they know my story, no Joe Legba from Odo Studio. Okay, where's Odo Studio? I've been the whole suit to work. I want to know all those things. I, I will listen to the song, understand it, write my questions. By the time I get the opportunity to interview Whiskey or people he grew up with, those sort of questions I will put forward because we want to know what you were like when you were born. Your mother had to train you all alone without a father figure, and you still ended up being one of the biggest global stars in the world. Backgrounding, you always have to search for it. It's what makes a story interesting because practically everybody can tell you that, oh, President Mohamed Bari is the president of Nigeria. But how did he become president? What were the challenges he had to face? What were the adversities he had to overcome? The same thing we're talking about for President Jonathan back in the day. What were the challenges? How can a university lecturer who didn't wear shoes when he was small become the president of Nigeria? How did it happen? Some say he was lucky. But the truth about it is whether you call it luck or you call it grace or you call it opportunity, he had a story that captivated a nation from no shoes to becoming a lecturer, to becoming a deputy governor of Bayelsa State, to becoming the vice president. And then without even an election, became the president. It's an amazing story. It is political, yes but it is a human interest angle because we were all captivated by that rise. And so that's the reason why I always say in my profession now, when you learn, one of the things I learned when I was in school, I went to law school as well, my undergraduate days. Fortunately, I had a funny story with that one. Before going to Unilag, you know, that it's a different adventure for me. You pick things in terms of theory. Yeah, that's great. But you always need practical, practical, um, experience, hands-on experience. And I know many of you are most likely going to media organizations. You need to go to organizations where you will properly learn. Going to an organization and just being another number doesn't cost it for me, maybe because of my own upbringing. For some of the names of the facilitators I've seen you guys have, I think if I had them when I was younger, man, I'd be a lot better than what I am today. But I'm thankful I've had some of the best um, facilitators in terms of um, broadcast teachers, journalist teachers who taught me as well. And I can mention a few names, but that's a conversation for another day. But what I tell everyone as well who's starting off, who wants to have a career in media, any type of media, digital media, print media, broadcast media, online media, as the case may be, what you need to know first is you need to learn properly. There's the theory, which is what you're going through. Yes, and that's great. But when you get the opportunity for a practical, you have to take your opportunity. It doesn't come every day. Uh, one of my seniors, one of my mentors um, says, hard work and perseverance, you will come out good at the end of the day. And I believe that, that if you believe what you are doing, if you have passion for it, you're good at it, you are improving yourself, you continue to practice, you continue to get better at it because you always have to have markers. So even as a, as a story writer, if you write a story, ask yourself, maybe write a story, right? A human interest, a human uh, interest angle story or whatever reason. And then leave the story, maybe one week, two weeks, go back to that story, pick it and read it. Now you'll get fresh perspective from that story. So it's the same thing with broadcast. If you feel, oh, I'm a great presenter, pick a story and read the story. And then maybe one week later, come back and listen to the story. Listen to the way you presented the story. The way I presented the story, did it even ignite any interest in me? Me who's listening to me read that story. So imagine if you cannot make you, if you cannot make you excited, how would you make the person listening to you? We know now that in time past, we used to say in broadcast media, when you talk, you're talking to one person. But now we know you're talking to a lot of people, that there are many people listening to you online, that is online radio, even traditional media, radio stations or TV stations have online platforms. If you go to YouTube, you find channels streaming live. If you go to YouTube, you find TVC streaming live. You find uh, Arise streaming live. Same thing as well for radio stations. Many radio stations are streaming live. At least I know Nigeria FM is on Go TV, so you can also watch that one as well. You can listen to it by, by your transistor radio, or you can listen live on the internet. So I don't have to be in Lagos or in Port Harcourt to listen to River State Broadcasting Corporation. I don't have to be in Port Harcourt to listen to any of the 
um, terrestrial TV stations or watch any terrestrial TV station, I could be anywhere. But what joins all of us together is that interest you pull in a story. Yes, you can write stories with your code half part of the five W's and H. But what keeps your what keeps your your readers, and what gives you that click? Because a lot of people are looking for clickbait now. So there's no need lying and saying, eh, "President, did you see what President Buhari did when he came out." No, you can write a good story, and even if somebody starts reading it, yes, the headline attracts. But after you write the headline, what is in the body of the story? And you don't keep information. Human interest story, you have to give me the, it's the same thing like news writing. You must give me the most important facts at the beginning. Those important facts, you just tease. For those of you who read Sidney Sheldon, I don't know if you've read, for those of you who read Sidney Sheldon, you know how Sheldon keeps you reading every page. You want to drop Sheldon, but they're like one more page, one more page, one more page. Sheldon keeps you in suspense. There are four of us in this room. One of us is a killer. But all of us have it. All of us have good boy or good girl face. All of us are holy. So one of us is the killer. Which one of us is the killer? Sheldon will keep carrying you from page to page. In broadcasting or in, in communication, that's a lot of pages to waste and a lot of time to waste. But I just want to give you an, ex, an explanation or a picture so you understand what's keeping your listeners or keeping your readers glued until your viewers glued until the very end. You want to know who is this person? Who is the killer? When you watch crime stories, uh, documentaries on TV, they can just start out and say that Bondi killed those normal people. No, but they will jump into background by telling you that, okay, that Bondi killed 10 people. This is what led to that Bondi killing. This is what we assume led to that Bondi killing people. Jack the Ripper was known as one of the mass murderers in the UK back in the day. Nobody still knows who Jack the Ripper is today. You just gave him that moniker. Now, but this is this and this and this and what they believed were the things that facilitated him to do it all because he was always going for young women, single women. That means he probably had this. They cannot profile him. It's a lot of background, a lot of research, but human angle stories are everywhere. We love it on social media. I checked the trending topics this morning and it's the same thing. Same thing yesterday, last night on Instagram. Hey, it was Don't to Dick, like I said, and Fabrice Kenyon throwing out receipts. And a lot of people were responding. Over 3,000. The Lion story they had over 3,000 responses. Right? Everybody wants to know. Everybody follows. But the story is boring. The foreign is drab. The foreign is, if the story is flat, nobody would read it. Nobody will listen to it. Nobody will watch it. That's what makes you a standout writer or a standout communicator. If you have all those tools in your front, practice. We always say this, practice makes perfect. No one was born being a great writer. Yes, you may have that knowledge of picking out words in the right places. Ruben Abati built his writing style to where he is today. A lot of you know him on TV, but I started knowing him when I was reading, and I love him for when I read. The same thing applies to you. If you want to become at the top of your game as a presenter, as a broadcaster, remember, not everybody will be a presenter. I don't know if people lie to you. Not everybody will be, a, not everyone is a good presenter. Some people are great presenters. Some people have the opportunity to improve. Some people are not cut out for it. They are stronger in writing. Some are stronger in creative. Yes, that's another angle I forgot to mention. In creatives. Many of the adverts you find are creatives. Somebody sat down to think about it. You know, there are times on social media when we see old adverts. Um, I think there's one that said uh, Shan George. It was an old one. Mommy, 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 daddy is shaking. And then she goes, your daddy's not even at home. Forgot the first word she said, Dundee. The daddy's not at home. My point is somebody conceived that idea. That's a communicator. The person conceived the idea. What would you listen to? Even the Airtel advert, um, 444. I don't think there's anywhere I've gone where anybody hates that advert. Everybody loved that advert because it was captivating. We're like, oh, yeah, no, no, that's, that's nice. Someone thought about it. That's a person who thought about how to touch other people, what would touch your sensitive button? What will make you open to this idea? What will make you receive this idea without flinching? And that's where the human, knowing what the human interest angle is, one, you must have connection with the people that you're trying to sell your market to. You can't be writing a story to, or you're doing a program at a time, say, I'm doing a show in the morning at 10 a.m. and I'm trying to sound like a child. 
I'm assuming all the children are in school at 10 a.m. So why am I trying to sound like a child at 10 a.m.? Instead, I know that if I want to do that, I have to leave that for later on. That, oh, children will be out of school, give or take, say, 4 p.m. Yep. So if I'm on radio, that's the time I can probably do that sort of thing. You need to understand all these things. You need to do a lot of research. You need to read. Always read. Read anything. You see a book, you see a pamphlet. It doesn't matter what your faith is, what your spirituality is. Because I know if I ask a lot of you, have you read any book that is different from your beliefs? Many of you will say no. How do you improve? How do you know what the other person is talking about? Because you need to, there's a thing called thesis, antithesis, and then synthesize, synthesis. So there's a thesis, the first point, antithesis, what is against the first point, then a way to synthesize both the thesis and antithesis together to form a compromise. How many of you read? It does, you don't have to read a book. You can read a material, a clipping online. We all read. It's not just about human angle stories. Do you read things to improve your vocabulary, to improve your knowledge? How many of you read content that is against your belief? Now, when I say belief, not spiritual belief, it doesn't have to be that. You're, let's say I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an idealist, right? I'm an idealist. How many of you read materials of a realist? You need to know, okay, what are the realists saying? For me to counter you, I need to first know how you think. When I know how you think, I cannot come back to myself and say, oh, I think all, I, the, all realists are insensitive. I say this because realists do this, do, do, do. At the end, this is why I've agreed, arrived at based on my research. You can't just sit down and say realists are terrible without knowing what we realists is. You can't say people who, you can't say people who were, uh, ripped jeans are irresponsible. You, you need to know them. You need to understand them. Know why they wear it. So now say, okay, it gives you that look of irresponsibility. It doesn't mean you are. Because a lot of people who we come across as celebrities, many of them. So back in the day, I think I did a little research on Michael Jackson. And I realized that for every time I listen to a Michael Jackson song or I watch a Michael Jackson performance, Michael Jackson was this there was this beast on the stage. And I listened to a Michael Jackson interview and then it sounds like a very timid child. And I'm like, I don't understand. Who is this? Who is the next person? Like, there's an alter ego. For those of you who follow Beyonce, she did something with Sasha Fierce. When Beyonce is singing, Beyonce is one way. Sasha Fierce songs are different. That's her alter ego. You need to understand. You need to be able to read voraciously. You need to consume materials as quick as they come. Online, there are soft copies for books, by the way. I'm currently reading a book on Mike Tyson. He's talking about his rape allegation. Before all these stories of rape came out, right? It has happened many years. It's not just our time is happening. It has happened many years ago. Back then, maybe because technology wasn't where it is today. Uh, there wasn't, uh, what's the word? DNA testing and all those other testing, it wasn't so rampant like it is now. They had their challenges. The story around Johnny Depp and Amber Head, that's a human angle story. That's a perfect human angle story, right? Two people got married many years ago. They decided they wanted to get divorced. In 2016, they divorced, which was fair, right? And it was a big story because they're both celebrities, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean actor, Aquaman actress. It was a big deal. Now, she writes an op-ed in 2019, I think I'm correct, alleging domestic violence. And all fingers were pointing towards Johnny Depp, right? Depp goes on to say, I've lost a lot of money. I've been stripped of Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, they removed me from Fantastic Beasts because the last, uh, the third part, I think, came out a few months ago. So there will be part four because if you follow the J.K. Rowling story, Grindelwald has not been defeated by Dumbledore. So that means there'll be a fourth part. Now, he comes up to say, just strip me of all these things. I don't have money. Now, because of the Me Too movement, everybody believes that. But like I said, it's about researching. It's about doing backgrounding. You need to balance. So in doing backgrounding, some of the stories I've read is they've gone to their previous relationships. How did it end? What were they like in their previous relationships? They're bringing the story forward. They've listened to both sides. There's a court case. The case is on, we're listening to both sides. As a writer, or as a presenter, when you're presenting, you're setting the facts. You don't take sides. Oh, this is what Johnny Depp said. This is what Amber Head said to arrive at your conclusion. It's a very, very big world. It's not the easiest, but the stories exist all around us. When we will write the story, I will smile. 
We just think, oh, someone just picked the paper and she said, no, 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 no. It's a lot of research. It's a lot of work done. It's a lot of background. Data. It's something you must imbibe. Imbibing it in this profession as a communicator is the most important. It's what makes you stand out. You can sit down and have a conversation and start talking. Someone will think, oh my God, this guy is like Solomon. He knows everything. Meanwhile, you've just done your research. You're well prepared. Never go for an interview, a program, a presentation, or write an article without doing proper research, proper background. Because if someone asks you a question deeper in that conversation, someone talks to you about Nigeria's history, and you've not done your history, you don't know when we gain independence, you don't know who our founding fathers, you don't know who fought for independence, you don't know how many military presidents we've had, you don't know how many civilian presidents we've had. How are you supposed to have a conversation with somebody? They're human angle stories, but every story in broadcasting, every story in communication has to do with background. You must know what you're doing. You may have the instinct, knows for news, but if you don't do your research, if you always assume, eh, I'm the best, I can write well. No, research, hard work always pays. And that's some of the things I have learned while starting off as a broadcaster in this profession. And I hope as well that I get to meet some of you in the future. I hope so, fingers crossed. I don't know all of you, but I'd like to meet some of you in the future. And well, you say that, oh, I remember you one day, you sat down and gave us one long boring talk. But I don't know, I hope that some way I have painted a deeper perspective into an angle that I think a lot of new broadcasters, a lot of new uh, writers, a lot of new people on social media don't do enough of. Thank you. Ebenezer. OK, sir. Um, I'm, I'm open I was to questions. For... Okay. okay good. If you have any, okay. If you have any questions to ask our no, lecturer, you were lost this morning, for what? You, can... you, were you were lost for what? What were you lost for? You know, for some minute my network was bad, oh. so I, I could not hear what was going on. Okay. So, class, if you have any questions, please raise your hand, and I will call you. Oh, you guys have had some. You guys have had some very good facilitators. Okay, can you imagine Dan Thomas, Becky Anderson, May. You guys are boring. <laughs> I have this guy teaching me, man. I mean, I'll probably be one of the best guys around. I'm like, man, this is cool. This is really nice. Wow, Sammy is doing a great job. So are there questions? Are there thoughts? I don't mind. I can I love to listen to thoughts as well. If you've got thoughts, that'll be good as well. Okay, guys. Does anyone have any question to ask? Okay, so while, while we are waiting for the others to maybe put down their questions, I would like to ask a few questions. So go ahead. Okay. So what do you do when, after you've done your background, your backgrounding and putting out your story out there, and then you don't discover that maybe one of the facts you stated we're wrong. What do you do in that instance? So what you do when that sort of situation happens is you own up, right? I think one of the things we, we need to learn as broadcasters is we're human after all. We're supposed to be perfect in terms of the information we give, or even the best make mistakes. CNN has made mistakes. Channels have made numerous mistakes. Now, even BBC have made terrible mistakes. I think that we put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we make those sort of mistakes and we want to feel or I'm an authority. I don't want people to think I have, I make mistakes. No, you're human. You make mistakes, you state it. Uh, the Guardian, International Guardian, I read a number of articles where there were errors, right? And I've seen where they corrected it. Maybe, maybe a couple of days after they make the correction and say, we made a mistake in this point. This part, part is not. There's even one I saw recently. They're talking about a Nigerian and they called him a veteran, right? And I'm like, but this guy is 26 years old. How can a 26 year old be a veteran? In our in some in some professions, that's not a veteran age. Maybe in gymnastics, you call that person a veteran, but in some other field, that's a that's that person is still very young. So if you make a mistake, you do your background and you do your research, and you realize that you skipped something or you got your information muddled. It's always good to own up and say, I made a mistake. Sometimes it's even when your listeners 
reach out to your, your viewers or your readers. Oh no, oh, it was brought to my notice. So, so the quicker you admit, when you are sure you made a mistake and move on, the more human you look. But if you try to make it so complicated, it makes it look like as if you are larger than life, as someone who never makes mistakes. And I think it reduces your relevance to proper people who are knowledgeable because you can listen to the radio and someone does a show and 10 people says, oh, you're doing a great job. You're the best person. You're great. But then if you're not, if you're not humble, when I mean humble, in terms of doing your job, being hardworking, doing your research, checking again, and then when you make a mistake like a human who does, you don't own up to it. You lose relevance to some of your listeners, the knowledgeable ones, the very knowledgeable, they're always knowledgeable listeners or knowledgeable readers or knowledgeable viewers. Don't ever assume because the band, that's in the general public, the horde is failing you as the best thing that happens in sliced bread. It means that you don't make mistakes. We all make mistakes. So if you make a mistake, Does that, does that answer that? Yes, yes, it does, sir. Yes, it does. So I still have go ahead. questions. Go, go ahead. I, okay. So do you, do you have a step-by-step -step procedure on how to make people glue to your story? So I explained to you as well that there are different styles of getting to the end of the story. Um, every story has... We're all different. What I love to read, maybe not what you love to read. It's like saying novels. We could sit down in this class and ask the people who read novels, who's your favorite author? And some person will tell you Nora Roberts, some will tell you Jackie Collins, some will tell you um, Dean Coons, some will tell you Dan Brown, some will say J.K. Rowling, Robert Ludlum. We can all mention different authors. I only told you mine is Michael Christian. I love Christian. I love James Patterson, right? I love Sidney Sheldon, yes. You need to know first what works for you. And that's why I started at the beginning by saying, you can copy. We all copy. There's nobody on this earth who doesn't copy, especially in this our profession. But when you copy, also be true to yourself. Are you copying somebody because you just like the person? Or are you copying the person because you have the ability this person has? That's why I gave you a good example. I said, uh, GJ uh, Johnson, GJ Johnson, I think that's his name, J-A-J. That's, that's why I know him as, works for reading. I'm sure show will look. I told people I respect so much in this profession, right? And I ask myself every day that can I, can I present like Femi Shoulu? I, I, may, I may be able to use his words, his mannerism, but I would never sound like him because number one, I don't have his tone of voice. I don't have his, um, I don't have his use of his um, tempo and every other thing. But I realized that for JJ, I kind of have his tone of voice. I also have his um, temples and every other thing, when to breathe, when to stop, how to use the pulses. Those kind of things work for me. All I do is I pick that style, I adopt it, and then I use it. So it's the same thing for writing. When you write a story, the question you need to first ask yourself is what's your strength? How do you write stories? I've already explained to you that in core news, is five Ws and H. Ebenezer called Femi Farawi about a possible interactive session. The interactive session was held, or it was held on Monday, or it was held on Tuesday at 10 a.m. It was held online using YouTube platform. That's the basic, right? But there are some human interest angle stories. You need to touch something. You need to touch that sensitive part. You need what wakes you up when you read a story. I came across a story recently as well. There's a Nigerian in Lagos, right? She's a she's a Muslim sister. And it was very funny because I was on Instagram and I just saw Neymar, for those of you who know Neymar, the popular Brazilian footballer. And he says, oh, she's been one of the women selected for his global seven team for his Neymar football team in Qatar. This girl has not seen Ikeja Airport. This girl doesn't know squats about international football. So I'm like, who is this girl? It's one of, our, of the seven people Neymar picked, she was only two, she was, she was, there were only two women. So five guys and two women. Who is this girl? The girl sells, I have to do my research. The girl sells in Ojota, 
She sells in Ojota Bridge. It's a popular bus stop in Lagos. She sells on that overhead bridge. And what does she sell? She sells polar nuts and sweets. She's not a popular footballer. I have never heard of her. Who are you? How's the name? I pick you up. So I reach out to the Red Bull guys. Like, okay, I'd like to know more about this girl. Can you give me a contact? And I talk to her. But I studied her Instagram page, right? And then I get to meet her. And then I, have, I ask her all these questions one after the other. So how did you go about it? What did you do? And he says, all she did was a video posted it with 40,000 other people. And surprisingly, name her Peter. She's currently in Qatar, as I speak to you now. She's in Qatar. And it's a remarkable story, right? And then I put the story out. I had an interview with her, and I also put the story out on my social media platforms and all. And yeah, it was mixed reactions. A lot of people were impressed. And I asked Red Bull that this girl, how come you guys didn't do a story, that this would be a big push, not only for your brand, but it also makes Nigerians believe that every time it's not about who has money. Now, to answer your question, the reason I use this long example is to answer your question, what you need to always do is understand that your style will not be loved by all. Not, there are many writers, I've, I've mentioned Ruben Abbas, because that's the one that has a style that appeals to me. Yes, he's also internationally revered, but I love that. Another person may come and tell you, or oh, read, um, what's his name, Agbede from The Nation. Another person may call another writer from The Guardian. We're all different. We have different persons we write all at books. But what you try to do when you write the stories what will be interesting enough? And when you write a story, never be, or when you do a show, you're still young and you're all learning. When I mean young, I'm talking about young in this profession. I don't know how old you are. But when you start, you need to always have people to look at the work you've done and give comments. Oh, what did I do? As one of us, for me, I always look for the wrong part. I want to hear the wrong part I have done. Tell me the, don't tell me the right part. Tell me the wrong one. I should improve on. I want to know that, okay, your tempo improve on your tempo, improve on your speed, improve on your uh, vocabulary, improve on your, uh, your pitch. You need to know all these things. You need to understand this. And once you do, it helps you and get your identity for what works for you. So I say this again to all of you listening. When you write human interest stories or whatever stories you're writing, and when you want to do background, remember, don't make it too cumbersome. Don't make it too boring. You know, there's sometimes you just, you just drop the information. It's like saying you're watching a commentary events, political commentary or sports commentary. The commentator has everything in his front though, but he doesn't start telling you that uh, President Buhari is coming, Vice President Shibajo is coming, this one is, he will wait. The president is expected. Once the president comes, oh, president is here, the entourage is coming through, the guard of honor. In 1940, that was the first time we started using a car to get the president in. Or oh, the Senate president comes and I say, oh, that's the Senate president coming in. The same thing for football commentaries. When you start talking about football commentaries, it's not immediately you give all the information. You give it slowly, small, 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 small. It keeps their interest. So when you write stories, you need to write stories in your way, but it must be in a way that you don't pack everything. You don't confuse people. You let them enjoy, let them see, but it's like your food. You, because you see, you, you, you take it you eat it slowly, you, you enjoy it, not just rush it. When you rush it, you probably will choke, you drop or something. So that's the same thing when you write stories. You write stories with your style, but you hope as well as well that if you write it well, you will have your own good readers who love your style. Thank you very much, sir. Um, from the look of things, uh, none of us have any question left. Uh, and that's that means that's the lecture you had, the lecture you had with us was very, very insightful. I want to say thank a very you. big thank you. Thank you very much. I hope so as so, well. If you have any questions, just let me know as well. I'd love to, I'd love to help out as best as I can. Well started, like right. right to start like this one day. Okay, sir. So, um, I want you to help us with your maybe social media handles so we can follow you. After okay. the class, something. Akitemi Farawi. It's spelled F E M I F A R A W E. F E M I F A R A F A R A W E. So on oh. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, yeah? I look at none actually on this day. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, sir. So Thank before you. you you go, sir. So what would be your parting words, your last words for us 
before you go? Well, I would always say that no one has, there's no fast and hard rule about success. Um, you can sit down every day and feel that there's a lot more you should be doing. Yes, there is. But remember, for every journey, you've taken the first step by first going to go and you've got a passion. You've taken the first step by going to learn and improve on that passion. And hopefully, in the near future, you'd obviously achieve your dreams. Now, I'm saying this because a lot of us also started like this. To be honest, I started by, I came back from school, had I had no knowledge of what I wanted to do in my life. I, I even I didn't even think I'd make you know, and then I just had the opportunity to start learning. I went to University of Lagos. I had an experience there, in University Radio Station. And to be honest, my life has changed since then. From there, I've gone from one radio station to the next. I've moved everywhere. I said to the Eboin states. When I was in Eboin, I was still working for the radio station there. I have never been without a radio station. No one comes with knowledge from heaven. Everybody hone their skills, practice. Pra always practice and please whether you believe me or not always try to read read something read something it will at least for the sake of improving your vocabulary it will help your vocabulary get better and listen a lot to foreign materials how to pronounce words how to pronounce names yes when it comes to african names please listen to us right we the africans listen to how we pronounce our names but listen to foreign how they pronounce words there are some production skills as well. You'll probably learn production skills also in terms of um, how we introduce inserts on foreign platforms, so radio and TV. You have to be a voracious reader, a voracious listener, a voracious viewer, not just of things that you love, but also things that will improve your skill as a communicator in Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, sir. sir. Before you leave, someone wants to talk, and Mr. Mike Cookie, you can unmute your mic. Right, thank you, um, and say Ebenezer, and uh, well done, Mr. Femi, for the lecture that you you gave. Quite quite impressive, I, I must say here, sir. So thank going you through your CV, I see that um you have you have um um background knowledge around TV production. I think you did some stuff around it. So yes, um. I think it's up to the topic that we are looking at, um, backgrounding on stories. I was trying to see most of your emphasis was around like print media. I don't, I don't know yes. if um, there's a reflection of that in um, in broadcast. Uh, broadcast yeah, yeah, they, they, they 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 is. Play. The reason why I spent a lot of time talking about print is even what you read on television, what you read on radio, you wrote it down first. There are very few people who are so spontaneous. Nah, not all of us are gifted that way. Some people are so spontaneous, others are not. So for everything that we have seen, you start off by writing, it's an idea. They always say this, you write things, that even comedians write their jokes down. Right? Maybe in Nigeria, we don't do it, but you write your jokes down, you read it back to you, you read it back to yourself, you practice, you practice, you improve on it. And the reason why I focused a lot on print is because some people just feel, some persons will tell you don't write. No, you have to write. You have to, as a communicator, you have to be a good writer. Because when you go on television, right, and you're doing a, a show or on radio, you're doing a show, and you're talking about the history of Nigeria. So, oh, for example, we have June 12 coming up. That's Democracy Day. If they ask you on TV about democracy, they, you know that TV is the worst. In radio, you can still be fiddling. You can, nobody can see you. You can carry your phone, you're pressing it. You can be scrambling. But on TV, you can't even move. You have to sit down straight and you can't make funny expressions. TV is the worst. When it comes to background, they are not prepared. You have finished that game because you cannot run anyway. I don't know if you guys remember the NDC, uh, the NDD, NDDC story many years ago with channels. That's a perfect yes, example. Because they asked the man and he did not know. And then the first thing he tried to do was come up with an excuse which wasn't well prepared. You can't turn. In TV, you know, in TV, you can't say, wait, give me a minute, give me a minute. I'm going somewhere. TV zone is worse. When you're going on TV, my brother, my sisters, always prepare, always do backgrounding. Backgrounding is the most important thing. It's what makes you sound like Einstein in a room of other genius. 
is what makes you sound like you're the smartest person in the room. It's what makes you sound like you're the most prepared person. That sometimes yes, they may ask you a question that is not what you have prepared for. And you can say, okay, I'll take a rain check on that and I'll get back to you on it. But on the conversation you're having, you're expected to have read everything on it. So I use uh, Democracy Day, for example. On TV, my brother, you have to research, you have to read. You have to read everything. Coming into this conversation, um, funny thing, I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning to quickly, I started brushing up on my communication again. But yes, I've done this. It's, this is not practical for me. So it's easier to speak about it. Then I start telling you agenda setting, APA style, writing this one style, writing. No, I realize I'm just going to be giving you more theories that you already learned. What you need now in life is practicals. These are the things that you encounter when you go. And on TV, it's a lot difficult because the camera is on you. The minute you look surprised or look amazed, the camera picks your face up. That's why I'm emphasizing background. Because at the end of my sentence, I said, background means one of the, as background research. It's one of the poorest parts of communication now. There's a lot of false information, fake news, because people don't do their research. Somebody just tells you, ah, um, Femi is a criminal, is a corrupt person. And you don't even go and check. You just believe it. Hook, line, and sinker. And you swallow and you start talking about. But if, as a communicator, if you go to the back and do your research, check. When you come back, you can have things to say, oh, no, that's not true. Yes, he was alleged. Because there's some keywords. Alleged. That means he's not been found guilty. It was alleged he did this. Is he guilty of those allegations? The answer is no. No, until he's found guilty. He's not a corrupt person. So for TV, you need to do a lot of research. It's a lot harder because you cannot take a break and run. Radio, you can take a break and raise your feeder and take off. Newspaper, you can go back and check before it even goes to printing. Or TV, where do you go to? You're stuck. So it's good to always do your backgrounding properly on the conversation. Have a sheet of paper. Some people go with a pad. Maybe now with all these pads, technology around, yes. But even technology has its problems. I always tell people that make sure you always have a paper. It comes in handy. Teleprompter has problems sometimes. That's why you see, see news readers carry paper see, today. Because in paper, you just move the next sheets, drop the next sheets. As a paper, teleprompter is changing, you're dropping the next sheets. Talking about you're dropping the next. So the same thing as an analyst, you are talking about things, you have your documents in front of you. If somebody raises an angle, or you say in 90, um, even this man, I, I think I was watching a, an interview of Peter Obi. Peter Obi went for an interview with a sheet of paper. Because there are times he was like, yes, a lot of times you find him without a sheet of paper because he's very intelligent, right? In terms of how he speaks. I'm not campaigning for him, or I've not said anybody should vote for him. Or. I'm just saying that from what I watch, I realize that he's very intelligent. And at times he still goes on with paper. Because if you go on TV and you don't have the information, even Yemir Shabaja is very intelligent. You go on TV and you start mumbling because you haven't done your research. There are many political leaders now who mumble a lot of mumbo jumbo on air. They don't have, they've not done research, they've not done their findings. You need to do those things on TV. TV is the worst. TV is the worst. Because the director will not cut it. The producer will not go anywhere. Oh, yeah, talk or make a fool of yourself. And they always remember anything you see on air is you. You're the one who said it to. Nobody said it for you. It's your mouth that opened it. Either you sound dumb on air, you sound overprepared on air, or you sound just perfect, a master of the game on air. So that's why I think that is also very important. TV is the most important. TV is the hardest. TV is the hardest work to produce, the hardest work to come execute, because your mannerism comes in, how you smile, what you do. So for TV, backgrounding is even double important. Because other ones, you can make corrections for your mistakes. TV, you can still make the same correction, but you obviously you goof first and you show that you goofed before you can make the correction. I think that answers it. All right. Absolutely. So perfect. Um, just uh, a follow up, and that will be the final take from me. You encourage us to consume a whole lot of foreign content to improve uh, vocabularies and pronunciation. So, uh, would you want to? give some recommendations as to where you could source um, such materials or such content. Okay. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. Remember, like I said, everybody has different interests. 
So it depends on what interest you have. If you're talking about broadcast, TV and radio, um, the CNN and BBC style are different, right? You need to understand this. CNN is, if you listen to how they launch their inserts, CNN says, let's take a listen. It's something that is very rare. BBC doesn't do that, right? BBC just, even Sky, Sky doesn't tell, Sky just says what the person says and then keeps quiet. Automatically, the director plays the excerpt. But CNN says, take a listen. So you need to know what style works for you. I would obviously advise in terms of vocabulary, you can listen to Sky, Sky, any of the Sky productions, um, Sky movie, Sky news, Sky sports, anyone. Because it's not about what you like, it's about how you want to improve yourself. So if listening to sports production will teach you how to pronounce words properly, will teach you how to pronounce name of areas properly, that makes you a lot better. CNN, yes, is American English, but there's still things you can learn from CNN. Like CNN, you listen to CNN, they say Iraq. BBC says Iraq. You need to know what your style is. Are you American or are you British? Pick the style you're working. We don't go and learn the two of them. They're going to be speaking stupid English. Don't say schedule. And then now say Iraq. Schedule automatically means you're going to America. British is schedule. So you need to learn all these things. Pick what works for you. BBC is great. CNN is great. Uh, Sky is great. Al Jazeera is great. Our local content is also very good. Channels is a good option, right? Uh, TVC is good. Arise has been good. But when you listen to Arise, I think that how they, how they ask questions is very good. But when they antagonize in their question asking, I don't agree. That's not my style. I don't ever subscribe to it. Ask a person a question. Let him answer. If he goofs, ask him a follow-up question. Let him goof even more. Don't start bombarding the person and try to be rude. If the person doesn't answer, you move on. So that's also good as well. Uh, what else can I subscribe to you? I don't know what your Nigerian info is like in Port Harcourt. Um, but obviously, I believe as well that there'll be a lot of talk. You need a station that does a lot of talk. Talking helps you improve your vocabulary. You learn new words. And you don't know every word in the dictionary. You don't know how to pronounce every word. You need to learn how to pronounce words properly. So I think those names are given. If you are read, if there's someone who reads, uh, The Guardian, International Guardian, oh, it's great. The Guardian International is great. It's got everything. It's got business. It's got lifestyle. It's got movies. It's got sports. It's got, um, it's got international politics. So you can get, you can learn. It has feature stories. And yes, I forgot, please. When you read, always read sites or watch sites that has feature stories. You need feature. Feature is part, does a lot of backgrounding. That helps you. It tells you how much you should know on a topic and how much you should give out at a certain time. Read the Guardian, International Guardian, that's great. Uh, some people will tell you that uh, the Washington Post, also good. Uh, the Times, New York Times is also good. But I always subscribe to the Guardian, the National Guardian. That's fantastic for me. All right. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chen. All right. No problem. All right. All right. Thank you, sir, for the lecture, sir. We are really, no happy. And really happy. Thank you. All right. Sir. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Have a nice time. You too, sir.